The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. In this logical world that we live in, logic has not served man very well, ever. People try to adapt to things of a trying to be a more important person. And so their language changes, expressions change. People start speaking in, uh, you know, the, u utilizing new words they have from the lexicon. And they believe that makes them more intelligent, unfortunately. They speak well in that respect, but they have come up with no solutions to any problem that we face. So again, today, somebody says, Mike, you should check out the news. They had their experts on. These experts are speaking the same things we've been covering for years, but they're still missing the mark. They're trying to save face, but they're also trying to become the experts on what's happening. You see, the truth is, nobody knows what's happening. They don't know what's happening. All their charts have failed miserably. All of their predictions have failed miserably. Every effort has failed miserably. Every single one. This is mainstream scientists. So I want you guys to put this in perspective. Science can take materials from the earth. They can disassemble those materials and help us construct more resilient materials that are stronger than wood, right? stronger than stone. What they cannot do, they cannot solve any problem in which our father said man will continue to progress in specific ways. For example, if the Lord says society is going to become a loveless society, there is no fix to that issue. There is no fix. There can only be an awareness. If the Lord says that wind and tempest and storm will increase in the earth, there is no fix to that. There is only an adjustment, a warning for the people. Repentance, possibly. They won't do that. They're doing everything but repenting, and it's getting worse and worse. And when it comes to this weather phenomena, which nobody paid attention to 15 years ago, did they? They didn't. In fact, I believe they called everybody a wacko who said that temperatures would be on average 125 degrees, didn't they? How many people said that was impossible? I remember quite a few people saying that. And they didn't know. I don't give an excuse to anybody in the Christian community. They didn't know. But you had experts who said we would never reach that high of an average temperature. Do you know what today's or yesterday's average temperature was in several places on the earth? 125 degrees. Not 115, not 110, 125. And the death, the death toll is rising. And it continues to rise because they're not paying attention. We talked about hypercanes, did we not? Many people said, well, you know, I can't find that term on Google. Not too bad, they're coming anyway. It won't be a hurricane. It'll be something far worse. Nobody thought wind speed, straight line winds would ever go over 200 miles an hour. Isn't that what they said? They are coming. My point is this, science has, for a long time, attempted to prove themselves correct. They do this to provide themselves funding, to stay up with the status quo, to stay relevant for those who would pay for it. But those who have a relationship with Christ have been given some very strange insights, insights that all too often makes you afraid to say to anybody. Sometimes you're even afraid to write them down, because sometimes they're so wild so indifferent to what people are used to seeing every day we try to largely ignore them the problem is if you've been paying attention for many years there is no spiritual insight that has ever been misleading we're not talking about theories spiritual theories no spiritual insights the truth given to people all over the world to god's people and all too often that truth is too hard to swallow nevertheless it happens now we sit at the dawn of the days where Jerusalem is about to be captured. Do you guys know that? You know what the whole world is saying? Let me tell you what the whole world is saying. I'm going to define something for you guys. I'm not going to dodge this election. You could say, I've been given the green light to speak on several matters concerning you, concerning this election. Which means this election is more like a weapon than anything else. And it will cause casualties on every side. This time, it's not any one person that's going to win. 
but that darkness will expand. But just like no one listened, hardly anybody listened to the weather forecasts made some years ago. They won't hear any political forecast outside of hopes and dreams that they have and the trust that they have put in certain individuals to bring those hopes and dreams about. There's no problem in entrusting leadership with men. There's no problem with that. The problem is the worship of men. The problem is when we no longer look to the Most High to really save us, but we demand that of our fellow man. That's the problem. The Lord is quite clear in what he would do to anybody, any of his people, who would ever set him aside and put man in his place. The Lord did not mince words, and people are doing it. It's in their hearts. They can't get rid of it. It's embedded in their hearts. They'll only compensate. I'm starting to hear that too much. I, I even heard a person on the news speaking about the Lord, but there was a big but and a big clause. It's almost like they want to use the Lord to grant them what they want in the earth. I have to give you warning too. My coverage of political events is not going to be what you expect. It can't be anticipated. Even I can't anticipate it. But to anyone who wants to see the truth, the Lord will not withhold. Take note that you can only see the outside, the surface of a situation. It takes prayer and supplication and dedicated heart to begin to see the inside. When you see the inside, then you'll understand. It is my hope that more and more people will see the inside, that whatever you do in this world will begin to be effective and not follow the narrative that somebody gave you. Folks, somebody gave you a story. Somebody gave the world a story. Somebody's been working on a novel called Life on Earth, and it's a man-made novel. It is not the truth. That's going to cost big time. The Lord warned us. Why won't the warnings of the Lord just simply be the warnings? Why do we have to categorize those warnings against those we don't like? The Lord has a habit of something. I don't think I did it because I did not. You see, when something distracts his beloved, he removes it permanently. When his beloved begin to embrace things you're not supposed to, God removes it permanently. When his beloved refuse to hear him anymore, but they won't hear the warning have already been given. God confines them, all of them, right before the exile. That means he dispatches an enemy for correction of his own children every single time. That enemy is not always human, but that enemy is always effective, and it never fails to carry out what God has given it to do. Only the body can make a choice for the body. Nobody else can. And this people will have to live through, not see, live through. Many people are having issues with this heat today. They did not realize it was going to be this hot. They underestimated the heat index. They underestimated the heat, which is why the casualty count is building up. Strokes, death, heart attacks from the heat in many countries. Birds are failing. An assault is being planned that will be launched in about 24 hours. And you'll soon see what Israel looks like under siege. All because of arrogance, because people have stopped caring, because we fail to yield to spiritual insights. So I'll say it again, there's never been not one moment where any spiritual insight has failed. Not spiritual predictions, not spiritual conclusions, not spiritual theories, spiritual insights they have never failed. And if we could pay attention to those, which by the way, they're in the word of God. If we could do that, we too would see. But in the news, to me, it's not pressing at all. It's expected. It's not even annoying. It's the noise of humanity. The ways of men is very expected, as usual. Sometimes hopeful, sometimes not. But for the most part, it is men worshiping themselves. Remember the words in the Word of God. That men would become lovers of self more than God. Can you see that happen? They have become lovers of self more than God. Hopefully you can see that happening. There's a spirit I want you guys to think about, because it need not be in this talk. A spirit that desires to be right, the spirit of offense. The spirit of offense, or the spirit of stumbling, begins with a myriad of spirits that grab hold of a person that will do everything it can to get hold of your hearing, to offend you, to make you feel like you're proven wrong, to make you feel like you're inadequate. It's followed by self-pity statements. I want you all in your own way, but through Christ, 
to come against that spirit in your environment, just in your environment. I want you all to watch that spirit and do not engage it. It's coming. Don't engage. You see, spirits protect their secrets. The one thing they never want you to know is that they're working. Evil does not want you to realize it's evil. It wants you to believe the lie that somehow it's good. Through subtleties, self-pity, and subversion, it enters quietly to maximize damage at very specific points in any conversation dealing with biblical principles. In your own way, to come against the spirit of offense is to not act on any pride, ego, self-righteousness. Come against it. Don't allow it to operate because it's coming and it's going to grab hold of whomever it can. And when you see it grab hold of someone, because you will, pray for that person. Do not engage the person. Pray for the person. Why would they ever come forth in the first place? Because they have secrets. Evil is only effective when you continue to blame the person. If the day ever came when you no longer blame the person, but you saw the spirit behind the person, you will effectively disable that spirit from working through that person, thus setting the person free and binding the spirit. That day comes. Darkness is in trouble, but it's coming. It is within the spirit of offense, the spirit of stomach, are many spirits working in tandem to take down who they will, to run off who they will. My venting is a bit different. Though. My venting is more truth-telling, beyond any cryptic sayings. An animal is coming. All of you who believe in Christ, make yourselves ready. Now, it's funny but I had some colleagues tell me to watch the news because they hear me talk. And they think it's funny how the spirit can give a person something 15 years before it ever takes place and things unfold. But hear me on this. The reason I'm talking about this is because I'm not the only one that the spirit gives things to. The spirit has given you guys, you don't have to dovetail anybody else's statements or jump on the bandwagon after it's happened. All you have to do is trust the spiritual insights the Lord gives you. If you are preoccupied in sounding weird, how can you be trusted with things that have never happened before? Back then during that time when I was talking about the winds, you guys remember I said winds would be in excess of 200 miles an hour and people said, what? That will never take place. That's what they said. Temperatures, 125 degrees. People said that will never take place. That's what they said both externally outside the body of Christ and internally. And the reason why is because for so many years, the world has set a standard for everybody. And believe it or not, Christians have emulated the world as far as their intellect and intelligence and logic goes. Well, need I remind you, science has been wrong every step of the way. I, I say that because they didn't... Did, who do they warn about the weather that was coming? And when they warn people... Who retrofitted people's homes so that their homes would be adequate to deal with some of the temperature variants and the weather phenomena? Ah, you say no one. Exactly. However, when I spoke that strange thing a long time ago, some of you said, I think that's true. That's what some of you said. I can see that because you had that spiritual insight too. There's never come a time where spiritual insights have ever failed about anything because they don't come from the individual. It's not something somebody brainstorms. It's not something you put together. It's not what it is. It's given by the Most High. And it's given by the Most High for a reason, which means when anything comes like that, do not make money. Don't make money off of it. Don't promote yourself by it. Never do that, you'll be cut off. But realize, it's for your fellow man. And all throughout those years, did the world yield to anything that came from the body of Christ? No. The only thing they yielded to were those topics that were kind of like the topics spoken about in Zechariah chapter 10. Topics spoken about that promised people something. I've noticed something else too. Did you know that every statement made towards the world, listen to me carefully, the body of Christ, every statement that complemented anything in the world and the things they do in the world, it failed and it came from the body of Christ and it failed, didn't it? Because they were trying to promote people in the world, utilizing, saying it was from the Holy Spirit. I heard a person say, this was from the Holy Spirit. Need I remind everybody, the Holy Spirit does not make mistakes. The Holy Spirit is never wrong, never incorrect. The 
the people were speaking out of their own spirit, or position and placement, compromising everything, and for what? For an hour's fame, or a few bucks? When that happened, the world lost trust. I saw it happen, there was nothing I could do about it. So I thought there was nothing. And everybody jumped behind the statements because that's what they wanted too. And when it failed, Nobody ever talked about it, but the world lost something concerning the body of Christ. See, it never fails that when the body of Christ speaks up, people start listening, don't they? They do. They start listening. They may criticize, but that shows you they're listening. The body of Christ did speak up. The Christian community spoke up, but it spoke from a perspective of what they desired, not what the Lord said. And the world heard it, and when it did not take place, it caused the world to lose most, if not all, their faith in what the church was speaking. What do you think the Vatican, for example, and certain these, these bigger churches have to take a position of business to be heard? They cannot do it spiritually. They have to do it by way of business. They have to tell each and every person out there exactly what that person wants to hear to keep their members up. They can't tell them the truth that God gave them. They won't tell them the truth that God gave them because they have lost their position with the world. How do they do that? Speaking out of their own spirit. Speaking by emotion. Giving somebody a promise or some prophecy that will never come to pass, but at the moment it fulfills the need of the hearing of the individuals they speak to. We must never go forward like that, especially right now. I know this place won't. This is such an odd place, but I'm very thankful the Lord has positioned it. The way it is. There are eyeballs on us too. We don't want to mislead anybody. Because yes, we know that people play us, yes, but also a lot of people copy us. So we don't want to mislead them. To some of you, when the people start copying things, right, you, you already know where it came from. So say nothing about it. But rather hope that they say it correctly. How about that? Why? Well, let me give you an example. I'll be covering a lot in politics, but it will not be in the way that you think. See the foundation of politics has been set in the world. We're not talking about the foundation of politics. We're going to jump right into politics and begin to dismantle in very simple terms what's happening. There's a large disconnect in the language of politics where a person will jump and shout and say, yay, and they don't understand what the person said. People are still falling for pep rallies. Yet something else is happening all around the globe. And it's a warning if you pay attention. After our countries have become arrogant, and those things the world say is good is not good at all. The, the move of the world is, 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 I'm going to explain that. I'm going to give you my perspective on that and insight. Kind of like what's happening with Putin and Kim Jong-un. You know, I've seen that before. Today, my stomach was in knots. Do you know why? I've seen that scene before. I saw Putin and Kim Jong-un walking together. I've seen the coalition of forces with Putin, Kim Jong-un, China. I've seen them. I've seen them. Middle Eastern dance being conducted. It is so bad, but yet America is arrogant. They're doing nothing. They're not even calling for anything for the sake of this country because they believe they're right in their own resolve. They believe that Putin will never do anything. They believe that North Korea is not going to do a thing. That's what they believe. If they believed otherwise, it would not suffer Putin's subs to be so close. If I had anything to do with it, if I could influence anybody, you know what it would be? My influence would be immediate. Do anything and everything to get those subs 3,000 miles away from us right now. But they're not going to. They're going to blow Putin off as there is no threat. They're going to listen to the rhetoric between North Korea and Putin and think it's nothing, think it's usual. And they won't understand and he's speaking his truth. They won't understand he's speaking to the rest of his coalition. They won't understand they're positioning themselves for law. Yes, I said law. A real law. Not some playful law. A real one. They'll wish this day they had again. And they'll wish that on this day they would have committed all forces to move every single non-allied vessel away from the USA. Europe will do the same. See, because Russian subs are not only right at our back door. They're not only near us. They're near other places, too. Did you notice that? Subs are popping up all over the place. Russian subs all of a sudden. Now, they're, they're supposed to be training in Cuba, making some sort of statement, correct? Why are they popping up in other places, strategic places, and not just any places? These are positions. 
that are optimal for nuclear launches. You know, we talked about weather conditions having to be of a certain type before they launch nuclear weapons, right? We talked about that. We talked about that a few days ago. Do you not know the mainstream media picked up on that? And they were talking about that today, and they started to show Russian media speaking about the exact same subject, which is not always optimal to launch a nuclear weapon. You have to wait until weather conditions support such a thing. Go look it up. Go look up some of the rhetoric that they're showing on West on, 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 uh, in Germany and here about Russia talking about Kim Jong-un and how they're all talking about this is a prime opportunity to strike the USA, that weather conditions are favorable to strike right now. Better get used to that term, strike right now. See, right now it's just a word. It's going to cause great fear in a very short time. People are still too arrogant to see what's happening. And they won't be able to see until many casualties and many dead litter the streets. Now, no person can bring this on. No person can speak this up. This is a cause and effect of arrogance. Or the world teaches the world to look at specific things. I would encourage all of you to seek the Lord for spiritual insights because he will not lead you astray. The world has never been, never, they have never been correct in anything they prematurely pursued to change its direction somehow. They, they've always been wrong. They didn't tell anybody about the weather, did they? They kept saying we're having global warming. They kept having these conferences. But do you mean to tell me they never once thought to tell some of these construction companies to change the roofing material? You mean to tell me they never warned the insurance companies that the storms were coming? Do you know that a lot of people can't get insurance anymore? Now, we spoke about this last year, and many scoffed, yes, but I said so anyway. I told you, insurance people wouldn't be able to get insurance this year because of the storms, because they were paying out too much. You know what's happening now? Many cannot get insurance. Many insurance companies have gone out of business. They're kaput. They can't cover anybody else. Others absorbed through corporate buyouts and debt purchases. Those are spiritual insights, and they never fail. You all have them too. But if you're afraid to speak what the Lord gives you, you won't speak truth. You'll always look to somebody else to speak it. Well, I got news for you. The Lord put something in you too. And the whole body needs to know what the Lord put in you at an appointed time. And if you're too afraid to be embarrassed by what the Lord has given you, you're going to find yourself non-functional for the body of Christ. There's no way I'm the only one. Are they warning anybody on the coasts? I heard something else today. You know what I heard today? See if this sounds familiar. This came from an expert. This expert. King highly rated. Because of advice. Well, I was advised, you know, watch the news today. So this expert said, do you know what? They were talking about in some episodes. But listen to what they said. Here was the point of what they were saying. They said, we can have a tsunami that overtakes the coastlines without a volcano and without an earthquake. Sound familiar? In other words, this person said, no one would hear anything. There would be no indication. People would wake up and notice that water is in their front yards. Does that sound familiar? Sound familiar, anybody? They would wake up and water will have overtaken them. Does that sound familiar? Oh, they're catching on quick. You know why? Because they verified some things. And when they start verifying things, it makes them nervous. You better believe they're nervous. They're nervous. See, God will never fail to give a warning to the body of Christ. That's why you should never take a warning like the one person said it. Don't do that. Always take the warning as God gave it through one of his vessels. Thank God we have the warning. That's why anybody given a warning, and if they're giving consistent warnings that actually take place, do not make money from those warnings. Don't ever sell off life-critical information God is giving the body of Christ through you. Don't sell it off. Don't try to promote it and be the first person to get something. And don't do that. Don't prostitute God's goodness and how he gives information. He gives freely, so we are to give freely. Other subjects of interest, that's a different story. But when God gives you a spiritual insight, don't sell it. That's for the body of Christ. That's for no one's pockets. They're getting together to issue a warning. Can you believe that? The scientific community is going to issue a warning. Isn't that something? About, oh, yep, a water event. But oh, we already knew that, right? Then once they got to a point where they couldn't hide specifics, 
more and more people would catch on and then all of a sudden they would pop up and be experts on the situation. Stealing terms, things of that nature. And they're going to lead people astray because they caught on too late. But again, the Lord gives spiritual insight by the Holy Spirit. It is never misleading. It will prepare you in truth so that you're ready. See, many of you are saying, how do I get my family ready? Well, see, what needs to happen is you need to be ready. If you fall apart, your family is going to fall apart. If you hold it together, so will your family. Remember Job, who interceded for his family daily. He held his family together. Those of you who believe in Christ, you hold the families together. Stop saying you don't and start doing what the Lord put in you to do. Like to pray, stop neglecting your prayers. You're not in competition with anybody else when you say prayers. You're in your secret place, hopefully. No one can hear you but the Most High. And you are speaking to the Most High about your families. So continue to be a covering for them. You do live in strained times. But these are also great opportunities for all of you who held back and moving by the Spirit. Really consider the Spirit. Begin to readjust your life according to the Spirit so that you can see for yourselves. Don't bottle up the lightning the Lord put in you. You're on fire and you bottled it up. You bottled up what the Lord has given you. And for what? So that you can have favor with men. Let the Lord establish you. Always just step into truth. You know, some of us like me, right? We have done just about everything in life. And Lord knows if I didn't do it, one of my siblings did. But through all those ventures, so much has been discovered. When somebody goes through life and they go through all sorts of things, they do that for your benefit. Here's how it works. If you take the advice of a person who has gone through something, you can avoid. You can effectively learn, have 20 years experience by one simple decision. Or you can discard it and go through it yourselves and waste half your life. That's your choice. And so what I'm telling you right now, the Lord has put some things in you. But what he put in you does not match anything anybody else has to say. And you're ashamed and afraid to say it, so you just keep it all bottled up. Because it doesn't match what somebody else says. Have you noticed what I say? It doesn't match everybody else's stuff either. Or it doesn't, especially when I start talking about politics. Not optimistic like everybody else. I can see another element of play. Maneuvering pieces. It's hard for anybody to believe that. But I can share outcomes with you. Times are very different. You sit at the, this is almost like a sunset, right? It is like a sunset. The last day of the season you're familiar with is right now. When the sun rises again, it's going to be a different season you're not familiar with. But it's the season you've known about all your life. You guys know, how about, how about this? How about this? Somebody give me some Israeli news. What's happening in Israel? I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Somebody give me some Israeli news. Give me something shocking happening with Israel that the body of Christ needs to know about. Anything shocking happening with Israel? Or are they just, you know, still fighting? Is it still the status quo? Is that what it is? Somebody says they got rid of their war cabinet. Right? But again, he just, when well, you know, wants to step out. That captures the world's attention, but what does that do for the body of Christ? Little to nothing. It leads nowhere. It really doesn't lead anywhere. Why? Because it came from the world. But what do you have? What insights do you have? What oddball thing do you have within you that keeps popping up in your mind? I'll tell you one thing. You ready? I think Jerusalem's in trouble. How about that one? How many people keep having that one? Repeat itself, but you wash it out quickly because nobody ever said that. Because the whole consensus in the world is nothing can touch Israel. So then why did God put it in so many people's spirits that something is wrong in Israel? You try to like the people that your mentors like. Why is it that you have something different in you? See, it's that different thing we need. Not some repetitive noise that the world, the world has articles and things. Yes, that's good to know about. But my point is this, spiritually, God has put something in you. You're drawn to things. Sometimes you don't know why. Some things just waste your time. Did you know that Israel has a 24-hour attack plan right now? I mean an attack plan, attack plan. Did you know that? Did you know that it is in their minds 
that they must overcome Hamas and Hezbollah right now. Did you know they have to do it with America's might still in country? That's going to change soon. That only leaves them a tiny window. Why? Air superiority. That's why. It's a simple offset of Hezbollah's missiles, Hamas's missiles, Houthi's missiles, Iran's missiles, and air superiority, not to mention aerial defense systems. They have to do it while America's here. They have to strike now. They already know the world's not going to understand. They already know that the UN will not approve it. But they have to go now. They can't wait. Did you know that? You know what the real plan is? You're going to hear it. They destroy every militant. And only non-militant people will be left. Hezbollah, Hamas, are not people who wear a patch on the shore. They're not following a system of honor. Anybody can be Hezbollah. Anybody can be Hamas. Thus, you destroy everybody who is militant. My point is, the strike must happen within the next set of 24 hours. Only two. That's a max of 48. That's a mission plan that's already been finished. And the green light is soon to be given. You know what that will cause? You think they'll actually defeat Hezbollah? They will not. In fact, the Bible outlines in the book of Daniel what will happen quite clearly. It's outlined this circumstance. Long durational circumstance. It's in there already. We know the outcome. Well, let me ask you this. Are you prepared for the outcome the Bible speaks of? Are you prepared for the outcome the Lord said would come? When you do prepare yourself for scripture, that's when you stop believing what the world is saying. For example, Europe. It, it is true. Remember Pastor Paul said, the nations, the nations, the NATO nations have moved right. Remember that? It's true. They have moved right. Do you know what it means for Europe to move right? Do you guys understand what that implies? It's not good. Because, you know, some of these places, they don't have just a right. They have an extreme right or no right at all. Do you guys understand that? right? That means multiplied anti-Semitism. Do you realize that? That means the hatred, listen to me, listen to me. The hatred towards the Jews is going to be about a thousand times stronger than what it is right now. This is the movement, you see. Racism is ugly, but it's still out there. Anti-Semitism is ugly, but it's still out there. And what's happening to the left? They're being shoved away. You know what that really means? See, the left, in my opinion, is corrupted. Uh, that's my opinion. The left is corrupted in this way. The left desires a compromise with the people to forego God's value system or nature's ordained value system and to incorporate the dreams and imaginations of immoral things to have that part of society at every single turn and they promote it feverishly. We all know that. That is the, this, this, this far left thing. What else do they do? They believe that everybody has an opportunity. That's, that's not so bad. The problem is they believe in immoral identities. That's a problem. Now, the far right, because I'm going to show you something, so suffer this with me. The, the right, let's say the right, the right believes in a moral path forward. But they do have systemic race issues, period. They have problems. With races, period. I'm going to go ahead and address the elephant in the room. So you have the left who does not have a problem with race. They have a problem with morals. You have the right who does not have a problem with morals. They have a problem with race. With who is superior. With who things belong to. What happens when both are reformed? You will have a side. To be reformed is to put the Lord back on his throne in the hearts of both sides. Now, when this happens, what do you see? You see the left who believes that fairness is a virtue. Now, if the Lord is put back on his throne in the heart of the left, their immoral character is gone. And if that is gone, then they're looking at people by way of love, not opportunistically, to see who they can promote, to promote an agenda. If God was back on his throne in the right, because I'll tell you right now, do not like what I'm seeing on the right. To me, it's phony. It is phony for anybody to throw somebody under the bus and then come back and be his best friend. No, clearly, they're only doing that for a position. If somebody said, Mike, you, I mean, they just threw me under the bus multiple times because they 
just didn't like me. And then later on in years, that person comes up and they say, you know what? You are just the greatest. Excuse me. Pardon me. You got to give me some space on that. Those people are doing what they do for the sake of advantage. If the people did not demand Donald Trump, you know and I know the mindset of most of those folks. You know exactly what they're doing. I will not look beyond it. You know why? Because the Lord addressed issues like this. And it will always come. You remember when Donald Trump first got in trouble, how many people pointed a finger at Donald Trump and then the people spoke up on social media and those same people that pointed a finger saying he's going to get what was coming to him back down and said, oh, he needs defending. That's what they said, didn't they? Didn't they say that? Of course they did. But if you start looking, if you start buying the propaganda, you'll cease to see the truth. You'll operate by propaganda yourselves. You're not here on this earth to operate by propaganda. You're here to house the truth and to distribute that truth wherever you are. To provide that light of hope wherever you are. And that begins by carrying truth, not the misleading tactics of the common man in the common world. Somebody said, God has appointed it all. Well, that's not what he said in the word of God. Because Israel had appointed their own kings outside of God's authority. And because they did that, God said, well, then let your king you appointed save you out of this trouble. See, we read that last week. Now, in the book of Daniel, it says that God appoints kings. Israel took it a step further. Clearly, that was derailed when they, outside of godly counsel, began to pick kings by themselves. You see? And they paid for it. It's good to know that God, God will see the king. But it's also good to know where his own people went astray. This is very key to our situation right now. Listen to what I said. God's people selected their own king outside of what the Lord God would ever select. And they were in, they created a massive error in doing this. They turned their back on the living God and they selected someone based on not holy morals, not by the spirit, not by a prophet, but by what they wanted that guy to do. They selected this person out of their own spirits. And they paid for it. Do you hear me? And it's written in the word of God. And they paid for it. When God appoints a king, he appoints a king. When people appoint kings, well, they do so at their own risk. When God appoints a king, the processes of man do not have fingerprints of evil concerning that process. When men appoint something, it leaves a trail of carnage behind it. You can always tell when the Lord did something because he leaves a trail of holiness, indisputable holiness. When men do something, a trail of, of the dead or behind all actions of it. That's how you know when men did something, when God did something. Today's world, do they consult the Most High to see who the king should be? No, they do not. That's not what they do. The majority rules. And for the most part, the Christian community is quiet. The outspoken have the order of the day. We live in different times, and we also know, all of us know, you can't forget about the beast kingdom. You cannot forget about the beast kingdom. These kingdoms of this world, they are not the kingdoms of our Lord, nor of our Christ. Not yet. So if they're not, anybody appointed to be a king, I'm telling you something. Anybody appointed over these nations is going to face something. The only way to survive and to keep the seat is to compromise. It's the only way. And now why the Lord said, pray for your leaders. Mm -hmm. By goodness, there's a darkness in this world that will touch every seat of power. You'll see a corruption like you never did before. Doesn't matter who your favorite person is. You fail to pray for that person and cover that person by the blood of the Lamb. That person will be lost to the darkness. Hope you know that. I really do hope you know that. You cannot afford not to be involved in what's happening in the world. And massive interruptions are coming. Remember, before the beast ever came, the system came first. We saw that in Revelation. That first beast that rose out of the sea that had seven heads, ten horns, those are nations. Nations rose out of the earth. The second beast who had two horns like a lamb, as big as a dragon, he is the one that took the seat of power. And he told the world they should make an image to the first beast. They solidified 
the organization itself. I'm trying to tell you something. If you saw the policies, if you saw the passport, I'm going to call it a passport. If you saw what every human being on planet Earth would have out of this new arrangement, if you saw it and somehow you were let loose back into the world, what would you tell your fellow man? If you knew for a fact a massive indoctrination were coming and that most would not be able to see it and that most would embrace it, even the Christians, if the Holy Ghost does not get involved, you will fall for it. Because I'll say right now, great many already have. Because you can't see it, you don't think it exists. You think something is coming and your name is already on the register. Where do you think the conviction comes from throughout the course of your day? And then you throw caution to the wind and get into your matters of the world. Did you notice that it's almost like God is calling you to fully separate yourselves from all of that stuff? If you saw the vision of what is here right now, it's just not enforced yet. If you saw the compliance register, which means most people are helping it, most people already have the ways of it. If you saw them, what would you tell your fellow man? You could not tell them anything about the policy. You could not tell them anything about the patches, the seals, the law, the courts, the people assigned to the courts. You couldn't say anything about the organization itself. You couldn't say anything about the structure except to say, you would tell people every day of your life, you might want to listen to Yahshua HaMashiach. You might want to pay attention to Revelation because all the kingdoms of this world are corrupted right now. The ways of God in any of these kingdoms See, because if a person says yes, then why did God not claim them in the Bible, not one of them? The Lord said, you'll know a tree binds fruit, right? Is that what he says, what he said? I'll give you an example. November's coming, right? November's coming. I'll say right now, it doesn't matter who wins. It does not matter. You will see an instant change in authorities. It'll be followed by massive prosecutions. And they will seem to be inadvertent. Many of you... You don't believe in prosecuting anybody right now, but you will when that day comes. You will. You'll jump right on board. Many of you will. It will take the Lord to pull you back away from that. What's about to happen involves the whole earth. Everybody. You'll think we'll be without war by that time. A statement was uttered. You know what that statement was? It was a statement. We cannot continue like this. We cannot survive if there is an American election. That was consensus. That didn't come from America. That came from radical countries. And it wasn't some address nor some article. This came from the depths of their heart. They will die before they lose their own countries. Yet they know they won't have a country if this election takes place. So get ready for the upset. How many people have let politics cause them to assassinate somebody else by way of character internally in their hearts? If there were no politics, would you ever do that? In fact, if your father were right here on this earth, would you ever do that? Would you do that in the presence of Yahshua HaMashiach? Let me give you a scenario. Suppose November rolls around. There is no Biden and there is no Trump. Where would everybody's brain be? Where would the prediction system be then? If nothing people counted on was to come around at that time. See, this is what's so dangerous about not involving the Lord in the day now, and in your prayers of your hope for tomorrow. Men are declaring far too much without any authority, and they're doing it in the face of righteousness. Some men are even using the holy word of God to perpetuate their own darkness everywhere. Let me ask you this, how long does anybody think the Lord will suffer the truly innocent to behold such things without seeing the repercussions of sin befall these situations? The Bible was quite clear. We're going to read that at some point this week. Prophecy is one thing. What we hope for is something different. But this time, ladies and gentlemen, things are indeed a setup. Part of the great separation of the wheat and the tare. A home is being provided for both. And by themselves, the wheat and the tares, they're going to run to their homes. God will effectively gather together all the tares by providing them a home to run to. Same thing with the wheat. See, because when you're running towards Christ, you're certainly not running towards a person. But don't worry. We're going to get it all lined out with a lot of data. This is going to be the data week. Data of data. You guys know why I'm providing so much data. That's for you.
Well, some people can accept certain things. There are a lot of people who can't. I'm not proving anything. I'm just providing data. That's all. So keep your prayers up for the Lord's people. You'll start to see that by the close of this week. What these other nations, the other nations that are out there, I'm telling you something, they're far right. Their right is not like our right. Their left is not like our left. Just letting you know that. They are a bit extreme. They are. Now, of course, people make up things, too. They do. They make up things. They just do. And some people, I know some racist people myself. And the only reason they're racist is because of how they were bought up. So, yeah, some of those in COT used to be just totally racist. Because they didn't know. They were believing what was passed down to them by their communities and by their dads. You don't just chuck a person away because they're racist. That means they're, they grew up with something. You find out why they have what they have. You introduce Christ and his pure principles. Don't chuck a person away because they're racist. Stop doing that. People are many things because of how they're raised, because of what they're exposed to. There's a person in COT right now, and this guy, when he was in high school, somebody stole something from his mother, almost killed her. He proceeded to go find the two people that almost killed her, and it caused him to be kicked out of a whole city. Of course, he has some resentment towards that. It took some years to, you know, for that to reverse. You have to be understanding. God made it so you can communicate with everybody. You've got to open your heart to start understanding people. You're able to understand these things. You're able. You have that capability. You can reach people. So they reach people while there's still time. As for me, I don't agree with Satan. Satan is the one that says that one is no good. That one is beyond reform. That one can't be helped. I don't believe that. I believe the Lord who is long-suffering to us, desiring that none of us perish outside of him. But all men come to repentance. Not some people. All people. It just takes us going out with a message. And the question he put to us is, whom shall he send? Who's going to go out there with his word? Not our word, but his word. Who's going to be that ambassador? An ambassador does not bring his or her own word. An ambassador brings the word of the kingdom they represent, and they go everywhere with it. We're not ambassadors to Christ. We're not ambassadors to ourselves. We're ambassadors to Christ. So then be an ambassador. It's also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boastful, proud, blasphemous. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved? If you're not willing to repent, and the Lord Jesus Christ said, Except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. 